and try to convince people that literature and storytelling go together looks to me already like like a paradox. Yeah, I agree. Well, the, 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 I was thinking of two uh, big novels, perhaps the two most influential novels of the century. One is Proust's uh, big novel, La Richesse du Temps Perdu, which is a couple of thousand pages. And there was James Joyce's Ulysses, and people said, oh, at last we are liberated in the novel from the duty of telling a story. But of course, if you look very carefully at those two books, you'll find that there is just as orthodox in their storytelling techniques, although they take longer about it. They move. I mean, Joyce's Ulysses is just set on a single day in Dublin. Nothing really happens. But everything is happening. There's a man, Mr. Broom, there's a young poet, Stephen, and they, they are going to meet. And they're moving towards this all the time through the 700 pages and find that it doesn't happen. But there is a conclusion. They've met. They've made contact. People say, ah, here we have liberation from the necessity of having a plot. But there's a plot there. Not to I think in Proust also. I think there's a plot. I think it's Proust. I think it's Proust. I think it's Proust. There is a story. Oh, of course, there is a story. There is. It's a very complicated story. Very complicated. You have to look for it. You have to look. It's there, though. It's there. Yeah. Mm. Now, may I ask you, uh, Mr. Singer, uh, as we have subjects, I told you, themes for our programs, and ecstasy is one of those themes. I would ask you, ecstasy, is it good to be carried away by in ecstasy, or is it bad? Is it a religious feeling behind it? What well, is it? According to Spinoza, only emotions are bad. He considers emotions bad only when you add it with ideas, when you study mathematics or logic and so on. I think that without emotions, a human being would be a vegetable, no matter how, how educated he would be. As far as literature is concerned, it is, it is the law of emotions. Most emotions play the biggest part in, in literature. As, as far as, as uh, the, the moralists, I would say that they considered our emotions a, a very often a disturbance. That if someone insults you and you feel like killing him, it's, it, they wouldn't say that this is a good kind of emotions. Animals. Why should you have such a, a bad emotion of trying to kill somebody or to imagine that you kill, you kill him? As far, as far as literature is concerned, without emotions, it disappears. And like without storytelling, like without emotions, and without ecstasy, it, it would disappear altogether. Well, you mentioned the word ecstasy, of course. Uh, I, I was brought up to look at words and see what they really mean. Ecstasy means standing outside yourself, yes? No. Standing outside yourself. Do you mean this? Then? Yes, you that's mean, uh, what I mean. Carry, you know, we carried away. Carry, well, yeah, that, that, mean, that means you're carried outside your own personality. Don't you think that ecstasy is, is, is uh, made up of emotions? Well, I think, we, we, I, think we, uh, I think we tend to use the term, uh, we rather cheapened the term, and uh, it's, it's, it's come to mean uh, a very intense emotion of joy, usually, or even indeed of uh, the destructive passion, in an ecstasy of emotion, uh, he killed him, you know, in an, ex in an act of love, which is supposed to have the ecstatic phase in which you escape from your own personality and join with the personality of somebody else. I accept the term in that sense, but I, I can't accept it in terms of such a very high emotion, you know, the height of emotion. It seems to be a special state which is given to religious mystics, perhaps. It's given to us in the act of love, in the act of hearing music or reading a great book. We get outside ourselves and, as it were, enter a new plane of being for a very short time. You can't sustain it for very long. But that's what I mean by it. I know young people tend to use it very loosely, and uh, pop music puts it into, uh, into an ecstasy of excitement. It's not quite that. Ecstasy is a very big thing. When a saint, you know, felt he was in contact with God, uh, that's ecstasy. That's a, real, that's a real thing. And the only parallel to that, I think, in, in ordinary day-to-day -day living is, is, the, is the sexual, uh, the sexual yeah, emotion, which, is, is ecstasy. Uh, which uh, unfortunately doesn't last all our lives, but uh, lasts long enough for us to know what it's like to get outside ourselves. Since I don't know, I didn't know very well the origin of the word, to, to, to me ecstasy meant strong emotion. Most, uh, mostly in a positive way, but can also be in a negative way. When, so when is it in, in a positive way? It's like well, I would say, I would say uh, 
religious ecstasy. To me, even even uh, sexual ecstasy is not really evil. I don't. I never considered uh, sex uh, to be as bad as uh, as our moralist uh, preach about. Well, we've we've always. I think most um, cultures are frightened of sex, uh, chiefly because it uh, does take you to a uh, to a place. It, it puts you in a, in a situation uh, where you're outside the control of the state, you, you cease to be a responsible citizen. I mean, the, the, the mystic is not a responsible citizen. He's living in the presence of God. He doesn't give a damn about the, the state, the community. I would say... Well, they're frightened of sex, because the sex sets you free. I would say that the Christians are more frightened of sex than the Jews. The Jews, I think yeah, that's probably yeah, true, yeah. Yeah, because in the Bible, uh, sex is, uh, is not really anything bad, except, of course, you are not allowed to covet another man's wife, but at least he can covet your own wife or your own lover. In the Talmud, the same thing. Well, the greatest poem of sexual love is in the Bible, isn't in the, it? Bible. the Song of Solomon. Yes. And the Christians have had to uh, try and pretend that this is really an allegory of Christ's love for his church. So did they do it's that? Do they do that? And how? Well, it's not true. I mean, this is a, this is a straight, a very beautiful, a very beautiful the, presentation. The, the, the one expression there where he speaks to a woman and says, you are two breasts. I don't remember what he says yeah. about the breast. So the Talmud says, the two breasts means Moses and Aaron. That's and right. I, yeah. That's right. That's and right. there is even a Yiddish yeah. joke that the father comes into the kitchen Maybe I shouldn't even repeat it, and sees his son playing around with the maid. And he says to him, my son, I send you to the yeshiva, and you are playing around with the maid with her bosom. He said, it's already an hour that I stay with her. I cannot make up which one is Moses and which one is that. Oh, it's lovely. I, I shouldn't say it. You should. I'm glad you said it. I didn't know that. You should say it. <laughs> I think like thy, thy navel is like a goblet that matters yeah. not wine. Well, you know, this, this has got to mean... Uh, Jesus Christ offering himself on the altar. The goblet is the chalice and the, uh, and the, and the moisture is the wine. And, and this is, no, it's a, a straightforward, beautiful, it's the most beautiful thing we have in English. The Jewish uh, scholars like, uh, like the Christian did the same thing. It is, a good trans it is a good translation, I think, in English that we have, the King James Version. I think it's, it's, I think it's a good translation. The oh, King James Version is, is a wonderful translation. Now they have new translations, you see, which try and kill the ecstasy. Oh. What is it? Yes. Some of these new ones are really terrible. I mean, you, the New English Bible is awful. It's terrible. They're scared. We, in the old days, we say, vanity, vanity, says the preacher. But now we have emptiness, emptiness, says the Emptiness, emptiness. emptiness. It's vanity, 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 vanity. vanity, 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 vanity. It means, it means vanity. So some of these scholars, when they try to be very good, become very bad. Mm. Uh, I don't know whether to be... Uh, uh, Mr. Singer ironically says he's pessimistic, I suppose. Ironically, I can say I'm optimistic, and yeah. I don't believe the world is going to end. No, I think it's, it's going to go on a long, long time. I think also that uh, mankind has a tremendous capacity for renewal. I don't see the population of the world growing any less. I think mankind is determined to survive. It's 